Peace family. Welcome back to the King Kalima Show. I'm your humble host, Kalima Haru. Today I'm going to be talking about traditions. If you've been watching any of my um, other shows, I keep mentioning tradition because to me, tradition, you know, if you ain't making it up as you go, then it's somebody else's tradition, you know. And that's what we need to be doing, you know, because I'm going to use this up and coming uh, tradition as um, the step stool, so to say, you know, to show you why we shouldn't be celebrating these things. I'm saying I already know how it come together. We This, this right here, this Thanksgiving, or I like to call it Thanks killing holiday coming up, you know, we get the, the time off from work, you know, and family come in and out of town, you know, so it's pretty much set up that way. And you like, well, what can we do? Here's what we can do. We can stop calling it Thanksgiving. You know, I, if I'm a, if, if any of my family want me to come, don't come at me like, Yo, you coming to the, the Thanksgiving uh, dinner over your auntie's house? You coming to the Thanksgiving dinner over um, grandmother's house? Because I'm going to say, no. You know I don't celebrate that. Now, if you come at me like, yo, you going to go come to the um, black, uh, black family love day at auntie's house? Uh, you going to come to the Black Family Love Day at Grandma's house? You know, I'm I'm there. Throw the word Black Family in there. You know what I'm saying? And I'm there. We can, we can um, chop it up, eat, you know, do all kind of things that family and your loved ones are supposed to do. But let's get to the issue. Why we shouldn't be celebrating this at all in the way that they have us celebrating this. And I'm going to, yeah, they got to celebrate. It's not your tra tradition by choice. It's by force. And it only got, it absolutely don't got nothing to do with us, you know, unless you like me who, who look at the indigenous people and, and feel like, yo, they got a bad um, thing here. You know, they got a whole holiday celebrating um, the murder, the rape, the um, genocide of their nation. And, and here we are as a people who had the same thing done, throwing the kidnap part where they had the kidnap part too. So, you know, but here we are helping the Tamahu celebrate what they done. Now, that's why I say we, we, we need to create our own. So so what? It's 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 um a calendar date set up for this for um people to get off from work, kids out of school. Okay. We just call it something else. Let them do them and let us do us. So from now on Family, let's call this Black Family Love Day, where we come together and be thankful for our Black family love. But let's let's get look a little bit deeper into this whole um, Thanksgiving uh, holiday thing that we're celebrating, and maybe you will get on board and just be like, "Yo, I can't celebrate that." Let's let's find out exactly what we're celebrating. And I'm here with my friends to tell you the real history behind this holiday. Growing up, I knew that what they told you in school about Thanksgiving wasn't true. That's not the true story. The true story behind Thanksgiving was after every killing of a whole village, these European settlers celebrated it and they called it Thanksgiving. But it wasn't until Abraham Lincoln became president that it became an official holiday. He ordered 38 Dakota men to be hung for war crimes after the sacred holiday Christmas. 
We take this time to remember our elders who lost their lives due to what really happened. Usually my mom makes a Native American dish for us and we pray. Growing up I would be kind of annoyed that they didn't know what actually happened on Thanksgiving and that they're actually celebrating the deaths of many people and many tribes that were lost. Whether it's to give thanks or to be with your family, you should learn how the holiday was established in the first place. I'm thankful for being born indigenous to this continent. I'm thankful that I still have my culture. I'm thankful that my elders kept our culture alive all these years. I'm thankful to be indigenous, resilient, and alive. I'm thankful for us all to be able to stand together, stand strong, and stand as one. Happy Thanksgiving, America. Don't make no sense, right? You ain't really look at it like that. Well, I didn't either. See, we, what we got to understand is that the same people who put our ancestors in bondage, raped them, tortured them, basically um, gave them the, the title slave, it's, it's the same people who created the educational system, every type of system that's here. We ain't had nothing to do with that, you know. We ain't have anything to do with that. So you basically learning things from a people who hate you. And I know, like I always say, if I want to love, want to come on in and love, I ain't mad at that. Love who you want to love, like I always say. But you better love your black family. You know, you got to love your black family more, you know. And, and the way you uh, empower the black family at this very moment is giving them the truth. If you love your black family, give them truth. You don't have to sit here and keep going on with the lie in order to get along. Because in all actuality, ain't nobody really trying to get along with us. We keep seeing this. You know what I mean? You, you keep seeing it. I mean, every time you turn on the news and somebody getting killed by the um, Tomahoe's, um killer army, you know, these uh, race soldiers killing us, you know, even the ones with the same color. They part of it, that they race soldiers as well because you, you join an organization that's known for giving us the business. That's just it. Now, yeah, even I have people in my family who are, is a part of the blue, the blue gang. You know, that's what we call them, the race soldiers, the blue gang. They repping that blue, you know, mm -mm -mm, you know, they repping that blue. And the whole, we, it's no secret that that blue has a code. They have, they have a code of conduct, like every organization has a code of con conduct. This RBG over here, we got a code of conduct, you know? We got a code of conduct. So I know every organization has a code of conduct. And, and our code of conduct, one of the number one rules in that code of conduct is no snitching. Snitching is never forgivable. And they had that same rule. Except it's like you can't snitch on one of us. But that's for something else. We'll get to that. I'm always jumping around to make my points. So what I'm trying to tell you is these traditions. If you know the truth, why not tell the truth? You already done told a lie. You told a lie so long that it seems like it's true. So when people finally wake up like me, like I believe a lot of things, I just took it on my elders, whatever my elders said, yo, no question. But then when you do the research on your own and see where it come from, you can't agree with it. If if you have your own, if you have a your your conscience is working 
and you understand how valuable life is and especially how valuable black lives are, you know. And I'm not saying that nobody else, the other um, people's lives are not valuable, but they already know, they already standing up for theirs. Let something go down. They they come together. They form like Voltron out here on, on us, you know. They form like Voltron. We the ones who who have all this um, miseducation, misguidance, um, mismorals, all that. We 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 missed all that. We missed it all. But um, in saying that. We just have to learn to create our own. We have to learn to create our own. We got to get away from their tradition. Their tradition is not for us. We didn't take part in the rape, the pillaging, the, the um, genocide of, of these indigenous uh, brothers and sisters out here. We had nothing to do with it. If, if, you, be, if you really look at um, history... The African and the, the indigenous came together. If we could only kept it together, we probably wouldn't have racism and, and white supremacy doing what it's doing now. But yeah, let's 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 people look. Let's dig a little bit deeper into this whole um, thanks killing um, thing that we've been celebrating for so long. Black Family Love Day. That's what I'm talking about. Hotel family. What does Thanksgiving mean to me? Loss of land, genocide, uh, rape. I don't celebrate, you know, the arrival. I don't celebrate Plymouth Rock. Thanksgiving, historically, is the murder of the entire village. Thanksgiving is not about Native Americans and pilgrims eating peaceably together. That is not the history. My wife and I uh, actually fast on that day in memory of those people. We don't eat anything. I cook for the people that need to be cooked for to feed and empower and uplift other folks. Usually it's just a recommitting myself to uh, activism, fighting, you know, the um, colonization. As a Native American, you know, it's not easy. There are a lot of issues uh, we face uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Either we are completely wise or we are um, uneducated savages. They're using their political and financial power against indigenous peoples to take our land, to poison the earth, and to poison ultimately our people. This is because it's got a terrific ending. The first Thanksgiving. But the way we imagine that historic feast and what really happened are as different as Miles Standish and Miley Cyrus. Take the menu. Did you know that one of the main dishes on the pilgrim's table was eel? The truth is that the whole story leading up to the first Thanksgiving is stuffed with fictional cranberries. And what about the pilgrim's signature contribution that we love them for the most? The first Thanksgiving. The event happened somewhere between early September and early November 1621, we know from a letter that there was a celebration. That letter, written by pilgrim Edward Winslow, is the one and only eyewitness account of the event. It's the key to untangling all the facts from the fictions. So, in his account, he must highlight turkey as the main course, right? Even though turkeys are indigenous to the region, the Winslow letter never mentions them. It only describes four hunters being sent out to bag some water birds for the feast. And turkey are landfowl. They can barely swim. What about that cherished gesture of generosity? The pilgrims inviting a few of the Indians to pull up a chair. That never happened. The Wampanoag simply show up in huge numbers, outnumbering the pilgrims almost two to one. A lot of the paintings and the pictures on Thanksgiving, the colonists outnumber the native people by a large amount. We know there was probably over 90 native people at that feast. We know there was about 50 colonists. 
And the pilgrims don't so much feed the Wampanoag as the Wampanoag feed the pilgrims. Their chief, Massasoit, sends his tribesmen on a hunt, and they provide enough food for everyone. They bring back five bucks of venison, and venison is so esteemed by English people to receive a gift of venison is extraordinary to them. And venison was the meat on the table that everybody went oohed and odd over and said, oh yes, this is living. Deer meat, not turkey, is the signature dish on the table. But one thing we can all agree on, this was definitively the first Thanksgiving, establishing an American tradition we've been observing ever since. Sorry, but that's baloney. But the tradition of the harvest feast lives on in New England, and at some point, the name Thanksgiving got attached to it. Which is pretty ironic because the Puritan Thanksgiving focused on fasting, while the New England Thanksgiving is all about feasting. When Edward Winslow's letter is discovered in 1841, the New Englander who finds it decides the Pilgrim's Harvest Feast ought to be called the First Thanksgiving. It's not until 1864 that it even becomes a national holiday. But once we fall in love with a myth, the real story usually hasn't got a chance, even if it's better than the legend. So family, this November, which is November right now, it's, uh, it's the second of November. Let's get it together right now. What are we going to call this um, couple of days off that we got? If you got a couple of days off, you know, what are we going to call this? My suggestion again is Black Family Love Day. Black Family Love Day sounds so sweet to me, you know. Then, you know, if we call it Black Family Love Day, then we actually have something that a title that's conducive to what we trying to do. Bring back the black love for the black family. We got to get that. We got to get it going, man. We got to get it going. So I don't know. This is just Kalima's suggestion. If you, if you got um other names you would like to call this holiday, the next holiday that they got coming on, I, I got I got a whole um, show that I'm going to do on that um, Christmas holiday um, and why we shouldn't be celebrating that either, you know, because it, it, it absolutely does nothing for us. It doesn't empower us at all as a people. If anything, it takes power away, and I'm going to prove that. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm going to show you how that takes power from us when we celebrate that holiday. I haven't celebrated this holiday in years. And it probably started when the Tomahawk gave me 10 years and I spent my first um, Christmas holiday in the belly of the beast, you know? And it, it, it never was the same to me. That magic... Because that magical feeling, it's just another day, you know. It's just another day. And you already know you can't come at me with that other story, you know what I mean? That's, but anyway, I'm going to show you how that takes away the power from us when we celebrate it. I know this stuff hard to swallow. I know it's been going on for a long time. But it's other ways that we can teach our children. It's other ways. It's other ways. It's better. It's way better ways than lying to them. Because every time you do it the way you're doing it, you're celebrating a lie. That's just basically what it is. You're celebrating a lie. You're telling a lie. You're keeping a lie going. So when you're done with the lies and you want to empower your people, Come on over here. Hotel family. And like always, when I say hotel, I'm talking to my family. I'm talking to the people I know. You know what I'm saying? The people who know me. You know what I'm saying? And if you know what hotel means, you are family. Absolutely. Pass it on. We got to start speaking our own language. We, we sitting up here the only ones, you know, the only ones over here 
who don't who don't have their own dialect. They sit and talk crazy, talk crazy about us right in front of us. You know, plot on us right in front of us. We gonna get on that too. Me and mine, we learning Swahili. You know, I mean, yeah, that's what we doing. So pretty soon we gonna be able to tell te tell each other, boom boom boom. It don't even look right. Standing right in front of the tomahawk. It don't look right. It don't smell right. We gonna tell. We gonna be talking that right in front of the tomahawk, and they gonna be confused. You know. But anyway, do me a favor. Share the videos. Subscribe to the videos. Hit that like button. I'm gonna keep on bringing these powerful, powerful, powerful. videos and information to you pretty soon like i said got coming up interviews with um scholars entertainers you know what i'm saying we're gonna do what we do but anyway hotel family kalima haru <laughs>